Okay class, time for a discussion. Open your textbooks to page 96. What do you think unconscious anxiety is? Oh. Isaiah, you don't have to raise your hand. We are having an open class discussion. On another note, why don't you read the definition in the book? Unconscious anxiety involves a person behaving like they are anxious, even when they not know why they're acting this way. Why would they act this way? How does this affect their life? Maybe they're lonely. It, it probably affects them negatively. Good questions, Grace, and you're partially right, Becca. As you can see on page 97, a woman named Karen Horney developed a theory that argued against Sigmund Freud's theories. She contended that this type of anxiety stems from needs not being met, and this can halt the progress of a child's normal growth. Experiences of loneliness and isolation during a person's childhood are examples of what unconscious anxiety may develop from. So, if I'm lonely, I might develop this anxiety. How would someone act if they were anxious all the time? According to Horney, there are three coping mechanisms that a child can adopt due to this anxiety. The first coping style, moving towards people, relies on affiliation and dependence. Look, Mom and Dad, I got an A plus on my test. I only see one plus on that. You can do better. All I want is love and affection. Grace, I have great news. You were just promoted to manager. Whoa, that is great news. Sorry. Grace, I have great news. You just want a car. <gasps> Whoa, that is great news. <laughs> All of this is great, but if I don't have love, it's not enough. The coping style, moving against people, relies on aggression and assertiveness. Can you just stop typing? Whoa. Oh, papers are right. Can you just calm down? Shut up, Blondie! Yeah. Hi. Your numbers are terrible! You're fired! You're fired! Get out of my office! The third coping style, moving away from people, relies on detachment and isolation. So you guys are both invited to my party tonight. Literally everyone's coming. It's gonna be a blast. He's coming. He is coming. Yeah. Wait, like everyone? Well, <laughs> almost everyone. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Are you guys coming to the office Christmas party? Oh, yeah. Sure. I heard cookies. Are you bringing anything? Seven o'clock this Thursday. Be there. Are you coming, Isaiah? Oh uh, no, I'm not. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay. 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 Do you three know anything else about Karen Horney? Not really, no. I think she was controversial during her time, right? Yes, she was a Nero Freudian, meaning that she did not believe what Sigmund Freud believed. On page 97, it says that she believed that psychoanalysis should help people become healthier. That's true, and Freud believed that psychoanalysis should explore early childhood patterns of dysfunction. What kinds of dysfunction? Well, if you'd done the reading, you'd have known any kind of disturbance or issue a person had. At least, that's what page 96 says. That's right. Horney agreed with Freud that childhood experiences matter, but she decreased the emphasis on sex and focused more on the social environment and the effects of culture on personality. I hope you all learned something new about psychology today. Class is dismissed.